Hey yo, welcome back everybody to your C++ tutorial series. This code is exactly how I left it from our last on-screen video, I think video number two. In the previous videos, we talked a little bit more about the concepts of what's going on here, so hopefully you have a better understanding. If you're just jumping in, basically what you need to know is that this main function, it's called main, and this is going to be executed immediately when you run your program. So the first line that gets executed is going to be at line four, which is the first line inside of this main function. What this line does is it's going to console out hello world. This is possible because it uses the cout object, which is included from this IO stream file. After that's done, it says return zero which means nothing catastrophic happened. The return zero is actually optional, so you can get rid of that, and it's gonna work just the same way. Now, once again, to compile, you can say G++, and then put the name of the file, like so. And then to execute, you put dot slash A dot out, and it gives you the output. Now, instead of typing that out every single time, you can just use the up arrow keys, and that'll go to the previous executed commands. So when you're first starting with C++, you might see something that looks a little bit like this using namespace std semicolon. You might see it here, or you might even see it up here, like this. And if any time you're unsure if your syntax is right, what you can do is you can save and then compile, and if you don't get any errors, you should be good to go. So what exactly does this using namespace std do? Well, what it's going to do is it's going to take everything inside of the standard namespace and make that available to us directly, so you don't have to prefix it with this std colon colon. So just like that. So now we can compile our program and it runs just fine. The technical term for this is a using directive. So the question is, is this good practice or is this bad practice? Honestly, when you're first starting out, it's not a huge deal. The issue comes up when you start importing a bunch of different projects or libraries because it can introduce naming conflicts. By prefixing things with the appropriate namespace, you're being very specific about what item you're trying to reference. So in this situation, it knows exactly we're trying to reference the cout object that's inside of the standard namespace. So if you wanna prepare for that, you can just always prefix. It'll help you get used to the syntax and it'll make reading docs online a little bit more easy because you're used to seeing those colon colons. The alternative is called a using declaration. It looks very similar, but works a little bit differently. So you put using followed by the namespace you want to use. So standard. So we got rid of that namespace keyword. And now we want to be specific about what object we want to make available to us. So what we can do is put colon colon C out and then a semicolon. So now we don't have to put that standard before C out and it should compile. But the benefit here is that we only did this with C out specifically. So it's not like we're just bringing in a bunch of stuff from the standard namespace we only want to bring in C out. This is going to extremely reduce any chance of naming conflicts. So which technique you use, honestly, I'm gonna leave that totally up to you or whatever your professor or boss says. <laughs> I'm probably going to use this technique and on occasion, I will prefix things directly. Now the location you put this actually matters. So if we put it here, it's going to work for the entire program. If we take it and put it here, for example, let me clean this up a little. Well now, it's only going to allow us to use the shorthand within these curly braces. So our program should still run, and it works fine. But just to show you guys, I created this function here. We're gonna talk about that later, and I use C out directly. When I compile, you can see I get an error. It says one error generated. That's because it doesn't have the benefit of this using declaration right here. It's only available within these curly braces. If we take that and put it back up at the top, now when we compile, we shouldn't get that error. And you can see it compiles fine. So yay, that was exciting. I realized that I forgot to mention our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. What exactly is this? Well, it's going to give you all the tools you need to develop C++ applications with the huge benefit of being able to deploy them to Windows, Android, Mac, and iOS from one C++ code base so you are able to reach a much larger audience with a lot less work. Some of the things it calls out on here is that this is a great tool for building connected applications. So think things like Internet of Things. It works great with databases. It has a very strong community. I mean, it says over 3 million developers worldwide. That's kind of a lot of people. <laughs> And if you go up here into the features, you can get some more details of what it is capable of. So it kind of breaks up the capabilities into these categories. The ones I like a lot are the design. It allows you to really easily work with databases and REST APIs. It also has drag and drop components so you can easily make user interfaces. 
It's able to make responsive designs. So you can build a UI one time and have it run on multiple devices, but you're also able to customize for a particular environment. So you can have a specific layout for Windows or whatever you're trying to deploy to. So this is a pretty intense software with lots of things. Definitely something you might wanna consider is the debug options. So if you're like any developer, you're probably gonna mess a lot of stuff up and at some point you're going to want to debug an application. If you don't know, a bug is just when something doesn't work and you're trying to figure out why. One of the things that makes an IDE really helpful is that you can put breakpoints, so it will stop your code at some point and you're able to look at the state of your application at that point. So there are a lot of things you can do with C++ Builder. If you're just doing simple console applications, learning how to code, whether you're using C++ Builder or G++, doesn't really matter. But when you're wanting to build and deploy applications in a company or for yourself, then you might wanna consider stepping up your game to something like C++ Builder. You can get started with C++ Builder by starting a free trial. Basically, when you do this, you get the Community Edition, which is a pretty packed out version. You can go to the Product Editions here and hear more about it. So here are the different versions. Community Edition has the least capabilities, but one of the huge things is that it has limited use for commercial purposes. This means that you can actually build an application and sell it, make a lot of money, <laughs> before you have to buy the application and upgrade to the professional version. So there really isn't anything holding you back from using C++ Builder. Go check them out. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to be talking about variables. So we're going to deep dive variables and talk about what they are, how to use them, and how to succeed with that. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to subscribe.